Hey friends, welcome back to Adobe's YouTube channel. My name is Jess Goldsmith. I'm an illustrator and lettering artist with about a decade of experience in the industry. And now I'm bringing my knowledge straight to your screens. This is episode four of eight in my series, Mastering Typography and Text-Based Design in Adobe Illustrator. Episode four, creating eye-catching typography effects in Adobe Illustrator. Today, I'm going to show you how to use a compound path as a clipping mask in typography in a practical way. Then we're gonna take it up a notch by using the warp and distort tool. These paired techniques are perfect for creating eye-catching and unique text effects that'll make your design stand out. Let's get into it. Let's start by creating text. Grab the type tool or hit T on your keyboard. Type out your word anywhere on the artboard. Again, I'm going to use the word create. I recommend using a bold font to make the effects look more prominent. I'm going with a heavy sans serif. Make sure your text is selected, right click and hit create outlines. This converts your text into editable paths, which we need in order to create a compound path. A compound path in Adobe Illustrator combines two or more paths into a single object. This is an especially powerful tool when you need to create complex shapes that involve holes or cutouts. When you create a compound path, Illustrator treats the combined shapes as a single object, allowing you to use it as a clipping mask, apply effects, and manipulate it as one unit. So let's create a compound path by selecting the outlined text and hitting the Command and 8 key on your keyboard. You can also do this by highlighting your text, going to Object, Compound Path, Make. It didn't disappear, don't worry. Select the area where the text was on, you'll see the path show up, and then you can add a simple fill in stroke. Select your text, then go to Effect, Warp, and choose any of the styles. As you can see here, you're able to preview all of your options. I'm going to choose arch and then play around with the options horizontally and vertically to get my desired effect. Make a copy of what you have and put it to the side. We're going to be doing this for almost every single major step that we take in changing what our text looks like. We'll probably only use a few of the distort tools in this episode, but I want to show you what's available to you. Free distort will allow you to push and pull the corners of your text in order to create a more custom shape. You can try pucker and bloat. You can try roughen. You can try transform, which we'll be going over in a future episode. And you can try tweak, twist, and zigzag. Now we're going to expand our shape. We learned how to do this in episode three, but just as a refresher, you can select your text, go to object, and then hit expand. Now your clipping mask is set to the warp properties that we just applied to it. Reminder, if you didn't already, make a copy of the text that you currently have and put it to the side. Start adding some more details and effects. Create a rectangle with a gradient, use whatever colors you'd like, Send it to the layer below, select all, right click and hit make clipping mask. To add more detail inside your mask, double click on your text and now you can start creating and adding more elements. Create another rectangle inside your clipping mask and set the gradient to black and white. Add a third color option and bring the opacity all the way down to zero. You might need a minute to adjust the settings. Now with only your new gradient selected, head to Effects, Pixelate, and Color Halftone. Adjust the settings to your liking. Depending on the size of your artboard and the size of your shape, your adjustments will vary. Create a stroke with the pen tool and bump up the thickness. With that selected, go to Effect, Distort and Transform, Zigzag. Adjust the settings to your liking, or you can try the other distortion effects to see if there's something that you really enjoy. Now we're going to outline the stroke of the object by making sure it's selected, going to Object and Outline Stroke. Head back to the Warp panel and play around to see how you can make this squiggly line have some really interesting movement. Go out of the clipping mask and grab that extra copy of your text that you had before, and yes, make another copy. Go back into the clipping mask and paste your copy in there. Bump up the stroke and set the opacity to overlay. Now you are going to manually, not using the top bar options, but manually align the top and left edges of the stroke with the clipping mask to give it an inner shadow effect. Click out of the clipping mask. Go back to your text copy and make another copy. Make sure it's on the layer above the clipping mask, above the compound path, and then align it to be centered. Looking good. You can change the color of the stroke. You can leave it black. You can change it to a gradient. Your text, your choice. This next step doesn't have to happen inside of the clipping mask, it absolutely can. I find that it's a lot easier to make edits later on if it isn't, and either way, everything's gonna be grouped together. I always like to add some little emblems for more visual interest. Usually I'll do a star or a sparkle, but you can do a smiley face, hearts, squiggly lines, whatever you want. Or you can leave it blank. Like I said, your text, your choice. I'm using the star tool and I love that it's a live object, so I can add more points, adjust the curves at any point in my project. I created the shape that I want, and now I'm going to place the sparkle inside each letter. You could do this at the top the way that I'm doing it, you could do it on the bottom, you can do it random, whatever you like. Now I'm going to group everything together. Go back to the extra copy of your text and make another copy. I told you we're going to be making a lot of copies here. 
make sure to add a fill on the shape, but the stroke color is really what's going to matter. Follow the same steps that we learned in episode three to create a blend. Here's a quick reminder if you need help. Double click the blend, select the top text, and make it a lighter color. You can also make it a little bit smaller, move it around, and give it some really interesting dimension. We can take the skills that we learned in episode three to offset the path to give this piece of text a sticker look. There are two ways to go about this. Select only your blend, head to object, and then expand. You're gonna see now that there are a lot of instances of this text. You could use the Pathfinder tool to combine them, but you might encounter the spinning wheel of death. My alternative option is probably gonna make somebody rip their hair out at home screaming, but I've used it before and it works. Here we go. Take a screenshot. What? Yup. Take a screenshot of your piece and drop it into your artboard. Use image trace and play around with the settings until you're able to get something that's kind of like the outline shape. I know it's not ideal. Hit expand, simplify, make some edits, and then you can create the offset path. Like I said, if it works, it works. And that's it. Now you have a really cool typography piece. That's all for today. Thanks for tuning in and make sure to tune in for the next episodes. I'm Jess Goldsmith and you can find me at Chick of All Trade or at Women of Type. And don't forget to subscribe to Adobe's YouTube channel. Thanks for being here.